Before I start this brief video, I did want to mention we are going to be exhibiting at the New York Antiquarian Book Fair, April 21st to the 24th. So if you are in Manhattan, this is the preeminent fair in our field. It is well worth visiting. Come by and say hi. We're at Booth C25. Whether you're a beginning book collector or have been collecting for 50 years, it is the fair to attend. We do have a catalog of some of the books we're bringing uh, to the fair. You can check that out in the link below if you like. Uh, they are admittedly expensive, but perhaps warrant you taking out an equity line on your grossly overpriced house these days or cashing in some Bitcoin in your MetaMask wallet. With that said, these videos, however, are not supposed to be about uh, extremely expensive books, often prohibitively so and unaffordable for most people. They are supposed to be about books that you can find that turn out to be treasures. So in light of that, I'll talk about Harry Potter. Now, of all the calls I get, Harry Potter calls are some of the most frequent. It was printed originally in 1997, an edition of 500 copies, and every so often you see splashed across the newspapers a copy that has been discovered on the shelf of a child in his bedroom in surprisingly fine condition, I might add, that goes on to sell for six figures. But as you can tell from the old calf binding that this is not the Harry Potter, uh, this is the Harry Potter of the 18th century. And by that, I mean a book like Harry Potter that was beloved by people and really crossed all ages and sexes and classes. And that book uh, is The Arabian Nights or The Thousand and One Nights. Uh, the Arabian Nights, is perhaps one of the most influential books in history, perhaps next to uh, Shakespeare and the Bible. And I'm not just talking about its influence on writers such as uh, Sir Walter Scott, Jane Austen, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, and uh, Charlotte Bronte. I'm talking about the writers behind I Dream of Jeannie. The original tales were written uh, between, I would say, the 8th and the 13th century during the Islamic Golden Age, and they subsequently made their way into Europe, uh, largely at the hand of a uh, French Orientalist, Antoine Gallot, at the beginning of the 18th century, who, between, I think, 1704 and 1707, translated the volumes into French. Uh, taking them from ancient manuscripts as well as supplementing them with some from the oral tradition. This was the period of the Enlightenment, let's not forget, and there was great interest in tales from the East. These were the origin of the tales, uh, once upon a time in a land far, far away. It was also really uh, the birth of the fairy tale. The stage had been set by writers like Charles Perrault. So when Gallo translated the volumes into French, they were well received and immensely popular. So popular, in fact, that they were quickly pirated and translated into other languages. The first English edition appeared uh, from the publisher Andrew Bell in 1706, and it is known as the Grub Street translation, an anonymous translation, and that is the volume that I have in my hand here. When they say Grub Street, they sort of refer, by the way, to the periphery of the London publishing, book selling, and writing scene, where there were a lot of hack writers and publishers employed, real popular books were being published. Uh, and when you look up a term like that in the dictionary, and I always suggest, you know, of course, consulting Samuel Johnson's first edition, Samuel Johnson said of it, and I just wanted to read here, the term was originally the name of a street much inhabited by writers of small histories, dictionaries, and temporary poems, whence any mean production is called Grub Street. So if you're into collecting uh, popular literature of the 18th century, Grub Street is the place uh, to consider, and unfortunately you have to find them and you cannot order them on Grubhub. I would like to read the title page of this book so you can uh, see why it was so immensely and immediately popular. Arabian Nights Entertainments, consisting of a thousand and one stories told by the Sultaness of the Indies to divert 
the sultan from the execution of a bloody vow he made to marry a lady every day and have her cut off the next morning. So with a tale like that, you could see that this would be devoured by every fireside. Let's look at this uh, particular copy. This is bound in nice uh, 18th century paneled calf. It has a uh, lovely frontispiece engraving titled A Thousand and One Stories. Mm -hmm. And it also has evidence of an early ownership, uh, in this case, a woman's ownership, which is particularly intriguing, Anne Hunt. Now, this Grub Street translation was really the foundational translation in English. There were other later important translations, such as Edward Lane's in the 1840s, or famously Sir Richard Burden's. But this is the translation that started it all, and actually was the book that brought uh, even the title Arabian Nights into the popular English uh, imagination. Now, unfortunately, this book is only the second volume of a two-volume set that was published. It actually contains volume three and volume four, bound in one. Now, people ask me, do I have any prejudices? Uh, and the only thing I can say to that is, well, does that include odd volumes and books missing pages? Because when I first came across uh, this book, I was not particularly enthusiastic. I saw it was just an odd volume and in the back of my head. Odd volumes have greatly diminished value because of a fatal flaw like that. Secondly, uh, a lot of 18th century English books are not rare. They tend to be well represented in institutions and private uh, collections. So I was a little bit dismissive of the book, even though it was intriguing uh, as an early edition of the Arabian Nights, and I did not know at that moment it was the first English edition and such an influential edition. However, like Aladdin's cave, when you say open sesame, you discover the treasure uh, within. Uh, when you start to open the book and start to research it more, uh, it immediately became apparent that this is a very intriguing volume. If you go on the English short title catalog, the ESTC database, you can discover that there are only two other known copies of this first English edition, one at Princeton University and one at the Bodleian. So not even the British Library has a copy of such an important and influential work. Why this book is so shockingly rare is uh, a little bit of a mystery. Uh, I would say it was probably published in a reasonable number of copies, but like a lot of popular street literature of the day, many copies were no doubt read to death and consequently did not survive the ravages of time. And just by circumstance, very few copies uh, indeed survive uh, of the work. Now, as a bookseller, of course, I'm interested in valuing a book like this, not only for myself, also for these videos. So how do I value a volume that, on the one hand, is extremely rare and interesting and important, but on the other hand, has the fatal flaw of being incomplete? Now, this is quite a conundrum. Uh, and I'm sure if I ask some of my uh, friends and knowledgeable colleagues uh, uh, in the book world, they too would have a difficult time placing a value on a book like this. But once I overcome those initial prejudices of it being incomplete, I really feel that this is the exception uh, to the rule, and it is quite a jewel uh, in fact, there are, as I said, only two other known copies. And as we like to say in the trade, where are you going to get another one? And this is such an interesting book from so many facets, from the Grub Street popular literature facet to a woman's ownership to being such an influential uh, book in literature that I really uh, have to believe that a book like this indeed would be valued by collectors. Uh, and by scholars. I still have not placed a value on it in my head yet. I have to uh, resolve that conundrum, but I can tell you that if I went into Aladdin's cave, I would quickly rush past the uh, bejeweled Turkish daggers and the gold coins and diamonds and start digging around uh, for volume one of the Grub Street edition of the Arabian Nights. So, uh, thank you so much for watching uh, this little video. And as I said, if you are in Manhattan, do come stop by and say hello at the New York Antiquarian Book Fair.